Hi guys, so one of you asked us to make a video about basic sailboat electrics and as the boyfriend of someone who knows nothing about sailboat electrics That's me! I thought this was a great idea. This video is for all the Sophies in the world. All the people who don't know what a watt or an amp is, who want to run their hair dryer, the induction stove, or a 50 inch flat panel TV But I can't. But they can't understand why. And also, this is not 50 inch. At the end of this video, you're going to be able to understand what a watt is, an amp is, and why you can't run a 2000 watt hair dryer on a 1600 watt inverter. Do you get it? If not, hang with me and you'll understand everything at the end. Before we start, we need to understand a little bit about the world's electrical system, AC and DC. A long time ago, there was this little war between two dudes, Nikolai Tesla and Thomas Edison. Edison had invented DC, or direct current, as a way to move electricity around the world. What DC is, is if we take a storage device, like a battery, we run a wire from one end, the positive end, around to a device that needs electricity, like a light bulb. And we take another wire from that device and bring it back around to the battery to the negative end, creating a big circle circuit. It's very simple to install and a little bit safer for humans to work on. But there are some drawbacks to DC, one of which is it's very hard to move a lot of energy over a big distance without using really big wires. One of the reasons for that is because when we move a lot of current for the wires, it generates a lot of heat. And if we don't have a big enough wire, we could potentially melt the wire or even start a fire. If your electrical system is installed correctly, you should have a fuse or circuit breaker between the power source and the item that's using the electricity. A fuse is a device that will melt or break if too much current passes through it. A fuse can only be used once, and then it needs to be thrown away and replaced after it's been broken or melted. A circuit breaker does the same thing, except after it's tripped, we can reset it, therefore using it over and over and over again. Fuses and circuit breakers are designed to protect the wires in our electrical system, and they're not designed to protect the components at the end of the system, for example, a chart plotter or a hairdryer. Most of those devices have their own overcurrent protection installed within. On the other side of the war, we had Nikolai Tesla, who invented AC, or alternating current. And what alternating current is, instead of having the electrons flow in a big circle, what they do is they switch directions a few times every minute. Alternating current is a really good way to transform a lot of energy over a long distance using a little bit smaller wires. Downside though is it's a little bit more complicated to install and humans working on it, it's a little bit more dangerous. So you have to be careful when working on AC systems. Of course, these two systems aren't compatible whatsoever. DC devices can't run on AC systems or vice versa. So these two guys had a bit of a war and it involved electrocuting an elephant in the middle of Times Square. And in the end, Tesla won. Most of our cities are powered by AC today, but that does not mean that DC went away. In fact, most cars and boats like Polar Seal have their systems run on DC. However, today on Polar Seal, we do have both systems because like Sophie, many people want to run their home appliances inside their boat. The secret to beautiful hair on a boat is power. A lot of power. When a boat departs a dock, we need a way to take the energy with us, just like we need a way to take water with us in the water tanks or fuel with us in the fuel tanks. Batteries are the things that power our lives on board a boat. Things like a chart plotter or a refrigerator or an induction stove. Batteries are storage devices for energy. They can be very small, but obviously we're not going to power our entire boat with that. Or really, really big. Batteries can be lead acid or lithium, but that's a little outside the scope of this video. However, if you're interested in lithium batteries, you can click the link above and check out more. Before we leave the dock, we need to have a way to fill those batteries with energy. And there's a few ways we can do this. We can use shore power from the city's electrical system to top up the batteries. We can use our engine or a generator, or we can use renewable sources such as solar power, wind power, or even a hydro generator like a Watt and C. We don't have a hydro generator, but they look like this. Most of these sources do not use the same type of current or do not meet the charging requirements of the battery. It's not like we can just plug a solar panel directly into a battery. Well, you can, but it might mess up a lot of things. 
We have to have a way to convert those sources of power to meet the charging requirements of our battery. And for that, we use a battery charger or battery controller. But we'll talk about that more later. Our batteries are charged with DC or direct current. But if you remember, our shore power, the power that powers our cities, is AC. So we need to have a way to convert that AC power to DC so our batteries can be charged correctly. And for that, we use a battery charger. Battery charger will ensure there's a correct amount of current going to the batteries, the current is the correct type, and it will also ensure that we don't overcharge our batteries. To charge batteries with our engines, we typically use an alternator, which transforms engine power into DC current. It can be connected directly, so that's the easy one to deal with. Now, in order to charge our batteries from renewable sources, we need to have a thing called a battery regulator or a battery controller. The reason we need this is if we take a wind generator, for instance, the more wind there is, the faster it spins and the more energy it's going to pump out. But maybe our batteries can't absorb all that energy, so the battery controller or regulator will limit the amount of current that's going into our batteries. Once our batteries are all filled up, we can leave the dock. But how do we power our chart plotter or our hairdryer once we leave? As mentioned before, in a DC system, current flows from one end of the battery around to the other end. If that circuit is closed, meaning there's no brakes in it, it will power the device, like the chart plotter. But if at some point in that circuit, we cut it or we open it up, having an open circuit, the device will shut off. For example, on Polar Seal, we have a bunch of switches on our electrical panel. When the switch is off, the circuit on our system is open and no energy can flow through it. But if we close that circuit or turn the switch on, we're allowing energy to flow all the way around in a circle, thus powering our device. <laughs> so what about Sophie's hairdryer? Sophie's hairdryer comes from our house in Stockholm and runs on AC. She could have bought a DC hairdryer, but she didn't think it was good enough. This is the issue. We need to have a way to take DC from our batteries and convert it to AC so she can run the hairdryer. And for that, we use an inverter. It changes DC to AC so she can use her hairdryer. That still does not explain to me why I can't use my hairdryer. You're right, Vanna. Every electrical system has its limitations. But before we get into that, we need to discuss four interrelated terms. The first term is current flow, otherwise measured in amps or discussed in amps. Amps is like how many cars are passing over a point on the road any given point in time. Another term that's very similar to amps is amp hours, and that's typically what people discuss. Amp hours is how many cars are flowing over in let's say an hour. So if we have one car going over the same point constantly for one hour, we have used one amp hour. So right now we're using 28 amps. No, we're actually producing 28 amps. Oh yeah, you're right. Who's the one who knows nothing again? Voltage is the next term we need to discuss. And it's the measure of potential. So in our traffic example, if we take how many people own cars in DC and could possibly drive those cars on the DC Beltway at Friday night at 5 o'clock, that's a measure of potential or voltage. Generally speaking, voltage in a system needs to be the same. So if we are a 12 volt system, we need to have devices that run on 12 volt systems and not 24 volts or 36 volts or 48 volts. The next term is resistance and resistance is measured in a thing called ohms. Resistance is like taking a six lane highway and then all of a sudden making it a one lane highway and trying to get all the cars through that one lane. There's a lot of resistance there. Wattage is the measure of power and it's measured in watt. In our traffic analogy, we can change power by either increasing the potential or increasing the voltage or increasing the amount of current that's flowing through or the amount of cars going over a particular point at a particular time. We have about well, between three and 400 watts of power coming into our batteries. And our batteries, we have used 86 amp hours worth of power or worth of energy from our batteries. Which means that our batteries are 87.3% full. Ohm's law is what governs these four interrelated terms. Ohm's law is really useful when we're trying to troubleshoot our electrical system, but that's not what we're doing today. So we'll come back to that later when we get into troubleshooting. 
Now that we understand these four terms, let's see how they apply on our boat. For that, we can take this battery. And there's a few terms on the battery that are useful to know. The first is that it says 12V, or 12 volts, and that's the voltage at which our system runs on. On board Polar Seal and on board many yachts, 12 volts is the standard, so we want to make sure our battery is at 12 volts. The other useful term is that it says 10 amp hours. What that means is that we have 10 amp hours available to use, so we can use 1 amp for 10 hours, or we can use 10 amps for 1 hour. But that still doesn't explain why I can't use my hair dryer. So let's have a look at the hairdryer. Your hairdryer is a 220 volt AC hairdryer. And right off the bat, that won't work on our system. The current type is not the same, and the voltage is not the same. So that's what an inverter will do. It will change our 12 volt DC system to 220 volt AC system so we can run this hairdryer. But Ryan, last year you told me that I couldn't use my hairdryer. Yes, that's correct, because we have limitations. Your hairdryer requires 2,000 watts of power to run, but last year we only had a 1,600 watt inverter, so we simply didn't have enough power in order to run the hairdryer. In our traffic analogy, it would be like having 2,000 people waiting for a bus, but only having enough buses to move 1,600 people. Power available is not just an issue with the hairdryer, it's an issue with all the appliances we have on board. So if we turn all the appliances on at once, we simply may not have enough power to power all of them at the same time. For instance, our chart plotter uses 50 watts, and our refrigerator maybe uses 100 watts. But this battery, if we connect it to our system, only has 120 watt hours of available power. So this battery would not be able to run both of those devices at the same time. We need to be mindful of how many appliances we have on at once and the wattage of each of those appliances. It could be that we need to increase the size of our battery bank in order to increase capacity. Most boats should have the ability to run most of their appliances all at once. However, that's a topic for another time when we go and check out how to assess your energy needs on board. Last year, we had around 390 amp hours of battery capacity, 400 watts of solar, 1600 watt inverter, no generator. It worked for us, but we had to be a bit mindful of our energy usage, especially charging laptops, cameras, using the induction cooktop, which we actually couldn't use, which we didn't even have. This required us to run our engine maybe an hour or two a day while we were at Anchorage. This year, we did a major overhaul of our electrical system. We added 680 amp hours of lithium batteries, added another 620 watts of solar onto Polar Seal, and included a 3000 watt inverter. This now allows us to live our lives totally different. We can use our new induction cooktop, we can charge all of our computers, and yes, Sophie can use her hairdryer. Happy life, happy wife. Wait, <laughs> happy life, happy wife, or happy wife, happy life? Hmm. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about the basic of boat electrics and maybe gave you some confidence to explore your own electrical system on your yacht. In upcoming videos, we're gonna look at how to assess your energy needs, types of batteries you might want, and the size of batteries your boat might require. If you have any questions or you think I got something wrong, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe. It helps us out a lot. But for now and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.